Ah, the sweet, sweet feeling of victory. Hi again, everyone. I'm James Rapine with AllBengals.com and Cincinnati Bengals talk here at Heinz Field where the Bengals take down the Pittsburgh Steelers 24 to 10. They improved a 2 and 1 on the year. Yes, they're at the top of the AFC North tied with the Browns and the Ravens, but they hold the tiebreaker. And so for at least a day, the Bengals excited to get a win. They their first road win in Pittsburgh since 2015 and the first time they've had back to back wins against the Steelers since the end of the 2012 and start of the 2013 seasons. It was uh, a crazy game uh, as we expected, but it was a game where the Bengals seem to be in control from start to finish. That's one of my big takeaways. The Bengals dominated the trenches. They applied pressure on Ben Roethlisberger, sacking him four times, another five tackles for a loss. They completely throttled the, the rushing attack of the Steelers, holding Najee Harris to just 2.9 yards per carry. And yeah, Harris had a bunch of catches, but the Steelers offense never really got into a rhythm and they had these really long slogging, low, like just slow moving syrup on a windy freezing frozen day in Pittsburgh. By the way, it's not cold out here at all, but you get what I'm saying. And they struggled throughout the day and it was because of this Bengals defense. Logan Wilson had two interceptions. He got the game ball. The second year linebacker received plays for, uh, praise from Joe Burrow, from Zach Taylor, uh, from multiple teammates, and he deserves it. He's played great, had a career high, 14 tackles, was all over the field. In the press box, you kept hearing 55 in on the stop, 55 in on the stop. He was all over, and his interceptions helped set up huge touchdowns that gave the Bengals offense some confidence and some momentum. And speaking of the trenches, speaking of the offense, let's start it there with the trenches. Jackson Carmen makes his first career start at Heinz Field, something I know I was a bit concerned about going into this game. And guess what? He handled business, as did the entire Bengals offensive line. They didn't give up a sack, which they've only done six times since 2015. And get this, the Steelers entered today's game with an NFL record 75 games in a row with a sack. Snapped. That record broken, streak snapped, and uh, the Bengals now look to make it two in a row uh, as far as not allowing a sack, and that could start on Thursday against the Jaguars. More on that in just a second, but part of the reason why they didn't give up a sack, yeah, they did play well. They were good in the trenches, but it was also Joe Burrow. He was moving better. He was running. He audible to an eight-yard quarterback draw. There were multiple times where he used his legs, and it looks like he's getting more and more comfortable coming off of that ACL, which is what you want to see. It's expected, but certainly something uh, that we saw today here at Heinz Field. And Burrow had an ugly interception early, rebounded from that, and really played well. 14 of 18, 172 yards, efficient, 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 three touchdowns. And that's what this offense is going to have to be at times. And they didn't score as much as they would have liked to in the second half, but they're able to connect again on the deep ball. Jamar Chase, record breaker. You want to talk about records. He now has a touchdown catch in his first three NFL games. No Bengals rookie has done that ever. In fact, A.J. Green was the only one that had done it in his first two games. Chase broke that today twice. First, the 34-yard touchdown in the first half that gave the Bengals a 14-7 lead, gave them the lead for good, but then a touchdown in the red zone where he was the fifth read. He was Joe Burrow's fifth read, and Burrow talked about it after the game, and he said, look, that's on the offensive line. They kept me upright. They kept me clean, and it allowed Joe Burrow to find Jamar Chase, who beat Joe Hayden, and Chase did say that that was his favorite touchdown of the four so far this season because he got to beat Joe Hayden for the score. Look, there's a lot of reasons to be excited about this team. The fact that they continue to improve offensive line-wise, it seems like they're getting better and moving in the right direction. Joe Mixon had five yards of carry, uh, it, which, again, efficient. It's not like he was dominant today, but the offense was efficient, even though they uh, didn't get to that 30-point mark, which I think a lot of people uh, thought that they could do week in and week out. And I think there's a chance they do get there. But at a game like this where you're without T. Higgins, you'll take the 24, especially with the way the defense was playing. And look, this is a big win for these guys. It's certainly a big win for Joe Burrow and this offense. But I don't think it's bigger for anyone else than Zach Taylor. Zach Taylor needed this win. He came in 115-1 and 
on the road since being named Bengals head coach. Had never won an AFC North road game. Well, he got one today. So he can cheers it up. They can toast at uh, Paul Brown Stadium. Well, they, they were toasting at Heinz Field before they left. They're well on their way back to Cincinnati, as I will be as well. And we have a ton on allbengals.com and Cincinnati Bengals talk right now, whether you're looking for Joe Burrow's news conferences. We have our three down look. We have so much more, our winners and losers from today's game. To me, it was a bunch of winners. There weren't many losers. And if there were, they might be named Ben Roethlisberger. Either way, make sure you check it out, allbengals.com, Cincinnati Bengals talk. Hit that subscribe button. And until next time, I'm James Rapine signing off from Heinz Field where the Bengals again take down the Steelers 24 to 10.